Hey all, this is Anirudh. Today I will going to show you how you can create one multilingual supported Power Apps. Okay. Uh, so before starting the video, let's see what we will going to learn from this video. First thing, uh, how you can detect the default language used by the browser where that Power Apps actually running or the devices. I mean your mobile devices. What are the default language the user actually using? okay based on that you can change the default language second thing is that how many language power app support we can see and how many ways you can translate or change the language uh, in power apps one is you can use microsoft translation service and another you can use uh, manual translation manual translation is like maybe you can create one sharepoint list with multiple translation and you can query that uh, list based on your uh, choice of the language or the user choice of the language correct so there uh, obviously there is some pros and cons we will see later first we'll go the demo so this is one of the asset management system last day i already shown you so what i will do is like i will create one drop down language drop down i already have created one collection of the language so two properties i have given one is language name and uh, abbreviation of that language okay. so i'll collect this i'll run it here i place it I don't want to, to show you, uh, show the user EAN, BAN or something. I wanted to show them the full text, correct? Now, I have connected one of the list. You can just select from here so all the columns will automatically generate it. now how we can change first what we need to do is we need to uh, add this connector microsoft translator connector so microsoft translator connector is okay there are two connectors one is v2 one is without anything so this is premium connector, correct? So I have used this connector to translation. Okay. Uh, so here it is. I need to change this, correct? What I will do is I will cut it. I will type Microsoft Translator dot translate. You can see first thing is query so query is this second is language two which language you wanted to change so what i will do is i'll select this etl language selected i'll take it then i'll go here again dot selected dot abbreviation and then from which language you are actually uh, sending correct so i am telling them it is en slash us look like this now you can see this is just english if i change it from like bengali this is the first thing you can do uh, to tell you that there is a one limitations about this uh, translator service so this connector is limited to 150 calls per user per day now let's see let's say there is a hundred of keywords you wanted to translate from this language to that language okay so 150 calls will be very limited for you but looking at the scope maybe your app once in a day someone open with a different kind of language and you 
can ensure that that person will not call more than 150. That scenario, you can use this translation service. Right. Uh, this is one of the thing, and uh, yeah, another thing I told you how you can detect the current language. Correct. So current language is language. So this is your current language. I mean, you are using or your browser is supporting. EN is the language abbreviation, and US is the region. So there are many kind of uh, language. Let's me how you can detect so one if you give comma you can see there is a these are the list of language supported in power apps okay, okay so we learn how you can detect the current language saying that there is a inbuilt language function you just put language and you can get the which is the current language using <clears throat> Uh, what is the use of current language detection? Current language de detection is the use of, let's say, you can select default selection of this drop down. Okay, I have not done it, but I am sure you can do this thing how you can set the default language to this drop down. Okay, second thing is that uh, this is the one of the thing, as I said, let's say I wanted to change the product type. What I will do is I will copy this whole thing. I'll put it as a temporary placeholder. We'll take it. Sorry. So I'll put a new. I'll copy this. Paste it here. Okay. So here, what I'll do is I'll delete. I'll put it like this what will happen when i will change the level will get changed so by this way you can change every level whatever the displaying in the screen now tell me one thing none of the way i mean there are two way i already said none of the way you can change this well because this is coming from this is a choice column at the back end uh, in sharepoint there i have done it you can do with the custom code i mean you can create one drop down there in this drop down you can create uh, english uh, this different different language and uh, made one collection and that collection you can bind so whenever you are changing any of the uh, uh, selected language based on that language you will display but it always submit the english language at the back end you can do but it is a very tedious job i mean you cannot do in a form based application so you need to do one uh, custom application. If you have any problem, you can just uh, post in comment box. I will uh, create another video for that. Okay. So today I make it very simple. Step is first you need to create one connector, translator connector, Microsoft translator connector, and you just need to pass based on the choice of the language from the drop down, and it will automatically change. Right. So this is the part one. Then the second way, second way is that I have created one list, asset management translation. In this list, what I have done is I have created two uh, column. One column is choice column. Okay, so I have created uh, the list of language I I will going to support in my Power Apps. And another is what kind of text you wanted to display based on this keyword. So let me show how I have done it. So I have created this list. Then here I have placed that list. Then in the on start event, what I will going to do is I will create one collection like this. Okay. In this collection, you can see that I took from that SharePoint list with this specific column. If I don't take this specific column, what will happen is, let me show you. Okay. I'll run. So 
called dictionary is the collection so we'll go go to the grid view here you can see there are lots of lots of columns came which you will not going to use anymore so it will take time and it will slow the performance of the um, app to take this collection from one screen to another screen so it will always best to take the specific column you just want it here okay so this is the column now i will take this collection so you will select this and delete this thing now we will filter based on that choice of the user so filter each one dictionary that then will be let's say for now and ddl selected language selected configuration is equal to the column column is language list but this is this will give you a, a table i will take the first then i will take one particular column i translate text so it is copy this now you can see because it is selected bengali right so how i find the start because here i put the start now i will target for product type I'll go here copy the whole thing I'll copy here paste it here here i will put the key i have used here product without space type so now you can see if i change it is automatically changed Okay. Last one thing is the header. So here, what I put it, let's see. That's all. Um. So by this way, you can change every level, but as I said earlier, you cannot change this thing i mean that option if you want to change you need to create a custom develop all this thing okay then you can do the thing this is the one of the way you can do now let's go to that ppt as I said earlier easy to implement for if you go for translation service you saw already and uh, fonts of course there is a limitation of the call number and uh, the quality of the translation is not at your hand because it is a service you are using and that service whatever it is returning it, you need to show correct so it is not at, at your hand another thing is uh, cons you can uh, i can tell you that loading time or translation time always will be higher if you use translation service if you go for sharepoint and create collection on load that on load all the collection of your translation data or dictionary at your hand so you can change i mean very fast but for translation always on the load it will call uh, and then it will return back okay next is manual translation obviously there is some pros pros is uh, as said uh, you will decide what kind of the quality of the translation there is no limitation of the call and it will be fast correct for cons obviously it is a manual process so every time you will need to take one word go to translate.google.com maybe and you need to translate and come back and paste in the uh, that master data creation is that cumbersome job you can say and uh, of course implementation is not very 
quick i mean not very easy every time you need to filter that uh, dictionary with your uh, with your keyword and you will get that it okay what i think is the best use case of this translation service or uh, that localization service you need to use uh, when you are create one sales department case study app let's say there is so much text they need to read if everywhere there is a text and there is a very uh, limited of uh, submit data kind of things drop down or text box if those things are not there only text you need to display to read people e learning courses one of the example you can tell so this kind of things you can go for localization but for form you are submitting records until and unless there is a uh, i mean expectation from your client i will say english or the default language will, will be the best so that's all from today uh, please let me know if you have any queries questions put it in comment box i will try to reply back thank you